What's on YouTube? Welcome to another video. If your day is not going good, I hope tomorrow is better. Now subscribe, click the subscribe button and notification bell. If you are subscribed, thank you for your loyalty. No joking on the whole intro thing. I want to get y'all in here, out of here real quick. I just want to get this information to y'all. This is a quick video on how to edit prom photography. I actually do have the comment that someone asked for a tutorial on how I edit my prom photos. So unlike the sports videos, I don't currently have a preset for this. I didn't really know if I should make one because my audience is mainly just sports photography, but if it's something that y'all would like going into the near future or moving into like next year's prom and stuff like that. So as we start to go into like the year of 2025, I could definitely work on that hundred percent. I really don't mind. But as for right now, I don't have a preset for it. I have my own presets for my prom photography and stuff like that, but yeah, I mean, let's go ahead and get right into this. I don't want to waste no time. Let's go. Prom photography is pretty much just any other type of portrait slash street photography, depending on if you're indoor or outdoor. These are all just similar settings where a prom photo shoot could take place. So we have here in front of the church where I did that prom video, uh, some pictures I actually took there. We have an indoor setting here. Uh, this was pretty much like an indoor setting of a hotel. This was downstairs at the lobby. We have some outdoor nighttime ones under like this little tunnel style type vibe. We have the nighttime setting. So these are the raw photos that I took from those nighttime photos. And you know, just a couple more of those. And then last but not least, because there was no really true daytime ones, we have some daytime ones on another great setting that can be done for prom photos, although this was a graduation shoot. As y'all can see, we have a couple different situations that should pretty much help y'all gauge into how y'all can edit in different situations for the most part. With these ones, uh, I pretty much already shot how I wanted it to be. I wanted the background to be a lot darker than the subject and it's already there, but I definitely want to make the shot pop more. So when you're doing prom photography, the goal isn't to have to make the editing save the photo. The shot itself should be good right but there are some times where you have to you know whatever the case may be but the goal is to only have to enhance the photo in editing when i'm not using a preset i typically utilize the auto tool and just kind of see what lightroom wants to do you know if i wanted to increase that some more and stuff like that but however i don't want to play with the exposure tool because i don't want the background brighter but i do want my subject brighter. i would typically go to the crop tool and just go to level and then straighten it out until you know you feel as though it's to your liking other than that i'm gonna leave everything else with the dowels alone so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to the masking tool and I'm just gonna select the entire subject. So I'm gonna click on subject, select the subject, and now I can do my editing, right? So if I wanted the exposure of uh, her to be a little bit more, I would go ahead and do that, right? But I want her skin particularly to be a little brighter, but I don't want the dress. I don't want the whites on the dress to be this bright. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down a little bit. So as well as I want, like I said, I want her skin to pop a little more. So I'm gonna bring the saturations up just a bit, nothing too crazy. And I think about right there, I'm okay with. Now, the only other thing I'm gonna do here in this photo, I'm gonna create a new mask, I'm gonna click on person, and then I'm just gonna do body skin. And with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and do smooth skin. It doesn't make too much of a difference here because it is a pretty wide shot, but you definitely wanna make sure you smooth the skin on photos, especially if you're, if you're shooting females particularly, um, smooth the skin, smooth the skin, trust me, it'll make all the difference. This is how the photo originally looked, this is how the photo looks now. Now we're gonna do the same setting, but now we have her facing me. Gonna do the same exact thing, mask subject and just go ahead and up the exposure so i'm going to bring the whites down just a bit once again i got to up the, the saturation not too much you don't want it like this but you definitely want it a little saturated it's down here it's just a little dull so we're just going to definitely up the saturation a bit on top of us doing the body skin which we are obviously going to do and just going to go ahead and do smooth skin. We're also going to do some skin retouching, some simple basic skin retouching, nothing too crazy is necessary. So I'm going to do facial skin and also click on smooth skin. Now what I like to do, because as you can see this kind of like when you do the facial skin, like the AI kind of overrides the eye and it kind of overlays over the eye a bit. So I like to go to subtract, use the brush and just make sure the eye isn't even remotely being smoothed out because that would be kind of counterproductive to the next step in this, which would be to go ahead and enhance the eyes. So you're gonna click the eye sclera, and you're gonna click the iris, being iris and pupil, whatever the case may be, and it's gonna to go to enhance eye. Those presets are already selected in Lightroom. You should already be able to click on those and find those. It's very simple. You could up the dials if you want, but I suggest you just leave that. The only thing I would say you could play around with sometimes is the smooth skin. You could up the textures if it's too smooth for you. You could always play around with that. And with that, realistically, that is fine. This photo is fine. So once again, this is where we started. This is where we are. It's just an enhancement. So with this shot here, right, before we go ahead and call this out, she obviously has acne here. JL, I'm sorry, but not really sorry. You'll be okay. If there is acne peeking out of somebody's makeup or someone's face or something that you just need to get rid of for the most part, 
Lightroom makes it very easy for you to do. You go to this healing brush, you go ahead and click H or you just go to your healing brush and you click over it and it's really that simple. Look, look at how fast. You go ahead and just play polka dots or whatever. You know, it, it's, it's, it's very easy. Just make sure it's on healing and not cloning and it will make your job very, very simple. And anywhere you see that it's just any type of pimples or acne anywhere that you would like to get rid of, you simply just go ahead and do that. And doing a little before and after, this is before, this is after. You know, and it's the little things like that that kind of make the difference, especially on really close up shots like this where her face is like really, really close to the camera. It makes all the difference. That's what that's one thing that sometimes if I need to do any type of it, not really advanced skin retouching, but more than just smoothing the skin. If I need to do stuff like that, like I said, you go, go ahead and use the healing brush. And then when it comes to hair, that's a, that's that's something different. That 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 might be something you got to go ahead and take the Photoshop. If you got flyaways and stuff like that, you do. It's the same concept as terms as using the healing brush, but you're not using a healing brush. You're using a clone tool, but you really Lightroom's clone tool is nothing compared to Photoshop's. So I would definitely suggest, um, you know, doing that on Photoshop. So honestly, with this photo alone, I'm not even gonna play with the dollars. I'm gonna leave the dollars alone, and I'm strictly gonna edit the background and the subject separately. So we're gonna go back here, click on our subject, and we're gonna go ahead and edit her first. We're gonna bring the exposure up of her just a bit. Although she's pretty properly exposed, honestly. The only thing I would say is just the lower body because I was using an on-camera flash for this one. So like I said, just gonna bring that up a little bit, play with the saturation just a bit. Nothing too crazy because it's kind of properly saturated already. And we're gonna leave this right here, right? Now we're gonna come back to her, but first we're gonna go ahead and edit the background. I don't want it like super dark to the point where it just looks very, clearly edited so uh what i'm just gonna do is bring the, the the shadows down so if i bring the exposure down it just it does not look natural at all bring the shadows down a bit just to draw a little bit more attention to her instead of the background all right and i think that's perfectly fine right there so with that we're going to go back to editing her and we're going to do body skin facial skin we're going to go ahead and create and smooth skin right cool with that once again cool with that once again we're going to go ahead and check the eye if it is overlaying a little bit on the eye, go ahead and do some subtraction, boom. And then we're gonna go back here and just go ahead and enhance the eyes, pretty much. The photo itself was already pretty much good. Like it was pretty much good already. Once again, it's just an enhancement. And now we can just get to this tunnel shot right here, which was very, very beautiful. I'm, I love this shot so much. When I shot this, I already knew that I like the way this is. I like the way the background is. I like the way she is, I like the way the light is on her. I don't wanna change the lighting at all. Right, so the only thing I would like to do is just enhance her. I'm gonna go ahead right to here, go to subject, see if there's anything I wanna do. I think I'm, like I said, I think I'm cool with the lighting everywhere. Maybe the hat, maybe go ahead and bring the shadows up just a bit so you can see a little more of her hair. And that's about it. Now we're gonna just go straight to person, body skin and facial skin, smooth skin here and we're gonna go to smooth skin here. Now, just to save us some time, we're gonna go ahead and do the eye enhancement now as well. And like I said, the photo itself was already really good. All I did was do a little bit of enhancements and a little bit of skin retouching, and that's it. This photo was already beautiful. I know in the prom video that I did uh, when I was taking these photos, I know a lot of people were saying that the background should have been a lot brighter just because of all the lights and stuff like that, and I should have done that in camera, which I 100% agree. But I just already was in my mind like, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and raise the exposure on these in post. So I'm gonna go ahead and show how you can do that. If you do underexpose for the background when you're doing flash photography at night, how you can kind of just go ahead and bring the background kind of like forward I guess <laughs> or just make it brighter is I'm just gonna select the background and just kind of show you guys how you could just brighten up your background uh, you can go ahead and start with the shadows because it is pretty much since there is light in the background that the camera's picking up on the shadows will if up in the shadow dial will bring those lights out a lot uh, you can play with the exposure you don't want to do too much because then you start to you know yeah so bring the exposure up just a bit and just like that there is grain back here, and depending on the camera you have, there will be a lot of grain. I have the A1, so it, I'm, I'm fortunate in this situation. But once again, it is the background of the image, so it's not that important when it comes to like the noise. You could easily just bring the noise reduction up. That light is still there, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I wasn't too worried about when it came to brightening up the background in shot, because you could always just do it in post specifically because it is the background. Other than that, uh, this video was long and it wasn't on purpose. I just wanted to show you many different scenarios of which I do it, but I explained the concept of it in the very beginning. It's literally just enhancing the background, enhancing the, the, the subject, skin retouching, enhancing the eyes. That's really about it. 
So I will edit my uh, my prom photos. I hope I didn't take up too much of y'all time. I hope this did help. To the person that left a comment, I appreciate you for leaving a comment. I hope this helped a lot of people, including you. Don't forget to check out the merch link in the description down below. Check out the preset link in the description down below. And don't forget to join the broadcast link in the description below. Once again, I know I sound like a broken record, but that giveaway, we are talking about it in there when it's time. All right, man, I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. I'm gonna let y'all be, I'm sorry, I'm about to go. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to start creator. We'll see you next one. Peace.